Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Victor Chang, Executive Secretary for World Youth Day. We have a Building Your Faith with Brother Leo. We'll see a Cool to be Catholic short film and much more. Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Victor Chang. He's the Executive Secretary for World Youth Day. He's in charge of all the planning that's going on. He's going to tell us about the preparations and what we are to expect from this World Youth Day in Panama. We'll also be watching Building Your Faith with Brother Leo. We now go to a Cool to be Catholic short film by Mark Anthony Jimenez called One Hour a Week. does it take to master something? Days, weeks, months, even years of dedication and persistence. You'll never make it into the NBA by training just one hour a week. Your grades will drop if you only study one hour a week. And forget about joining the Royal Ballet if you only practice one hour a week. So if mastering anything takes more than one hour a week, how can just one hour on Sundays ever be enough to master your faith? Don't just practice it. Master it. I'm speaking with the Executive Secretary, Victor Chang, uh, for World Youth Day here in Panama. And uh, maybe describe something about the city and the, the country of Panama for our viewers. Well, uh, welcome, Father Thank Mark, you. to Panama. Well, we are a small city with um, uh, interesting history. We, we grew grow up as a point of, of meeting of different cultures, uh, as we were talking before. My last name is from China, mm. and it's very common to, to have people from every part of the world here in Panama. Actually, we are a small city and a small country, four million of people, uh, but we are very joyful to receive all the people for the World Day. Right, and some of the, the preparations is uh, for days in the diocese that involves even a greater area than Panama, yes. right? Tell us about yes, that. Yes. Well, we, we have all the dioceses in Panama involved in the days in dioceses. Uh, actually, we have Costa Rica too, Nicaragua, and other countries of, of Central America that are working prep in the preparation of their own days in diocese. In other part, some uh, congregations, uh, uh, religious congregations, like the Jesuits and, and, and others are preparing their own meetings in different parts near to Panama. Right. Mm -hmm. And Panama has a growing economy, largely built around the Panama Canal, but also banking, commerce. I was reading how it's a, a, a growing economy in Latin America. How has the reception been here in the city? Uh, is it good by the, the secular people? They're welcoming? Yes, for, uh, for, for all the sectors, the private sector, the public sector, is a great opportunity for the country this, this day of the world today because we, re we receive many journalists, many, many pilgrims, and we, we will have a special guest, Pope Francis. So with Pope Francis are coming uh, with a lot of people uh, that wants to, to participate in the, in the World Youth Day. And for all the Panamanians, it's like a, like a bless from God and an opportunity to show our country, to, to make a, 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 a big effort that for the, all the pilgrims to have the best experience here in Panama. And do you think it'll be a, it's very significant that the Holy Fathers from South America, South America or Central American World Youth Day, uh, the two together, will that be a powerful combination? Yes, definitely, definitely. 
is a Pope from Latin America. He will speak in, in their own language, in, in, in Spanish, so he will be here like home. Right? Are there certain initiatives for World Youth Day that you are particularly excited about or looking forward to? Well, we have many initiatives uh, for the World Youth Day. Uh, we have all this preparation of the catechesis for the young people, for, for the pilgrims. We are prepa uh, preparing um, these uh, main events uh, for the young pilgrims. Uh, the, the, the welcome, the Papa, the Pope welcome, uh, and the vigil, the Via Crucis, and the final Mass, all this. Are, we are working together with the, all, all, with the church, church and state to provide all the, the, the need for these events. And there's a, I know there's a great uh, like days in the diocese and, and youth festivals that have like a cultural exchange, right? It's a celebration of the arts, there's theater, music, dancing. Tell us about that part of it, because I think that's a huge part of World Youth Day. Yes, and, and a very important part because it's the, the part where the pilgrims will be um, sharing with, with other young people during all the day. We have in the morning the catechesis, and we will have during the, during the, the evening, you know, midday, uh, all the youth festival. We will we'll have some concerts, some conference, some um, plays, and, and we and there in, we receive more than 200 um, propositions of for the for a stage uh, during the world during the youth festival. So we are uh, right now in the in the process of of, set, of the selection of them. Right, and we should say like these catechesis are largely done by bishops, right? And then uh, we also you also have like you know people that work in youth ministry from all over the world yes. come and give talks. So you have, you have really, I know like from America, you get like some of our best speakers will come and give presentations to. Well, we don't have any bishops confirmed right now, but we, we are waiting in, in September to have more, more, more information about this. But we know that Cardinal, Cardinal Farrell will come at the head of the Dicaster, we hope that, and we will have another, another speaker that will be confirmed uh, the months before of the World Youth Day. Right now, we, we are working in some projects, like one of the, with the Ducat, mm. Ducat the, uh, like the Ducat, right. but this is the Ducat ah. of uh, social, social justice. Yeah. Social justice. Mm -hmm. And we are working with, um, with a foundation in, um, in special uh, Holy, Holy Bible Park with, with, with Holy Bible uh, information. And we are working in many, many projects that will be confirmed months before the World Youth Day. Right. And there is, I was reading in some of your literature, there is an emphasis on reaching out to the poor, those on yeah. the margins. Tell us about that. We have four, uh, four uh, parts in, or four pillars, I guess, in the, in the uh, pastoral preparation of the World Youth Day. One if the, is Holy Mary, as an as a example of disponibility. We have uh, Laudato Si as part of, of, part of the mission of the young people to, 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 to save the planet, you know? That's the Pope's encyclical as on the, the environment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the young people reality, very close to the Synod, because we, we, we think that for the preparation, we, we need to be clear about the reality of the young people everywhere. You know? So the church is preparing for a, a synod for young people. Yeah. So that's going to give some energy to this World Youth Day Definitely. in January. Yeah. Definitely. In, the synod will be in, in October, and the, the, the World Youth Day will be in, in January. We know that, that it's very, very probably that we will have some of the, the, the force of the, the sign of the, in the World Youth Day. And then we have the Church of the Poor and the Martyrs. And our church in Central America has been part of, has a very, uh, has been working very close with the poor people in, in, with this, in, in this work. Uh, we have right now, uh, bless uh, Monsignor Romero, who will be saint 
in, in October. Mm -hmm. So it's like an example of, the, of the, what the church need to do. Right, and, and some of the patron saints of World Youth Day for this one in Panama is St. John Bosco. You mentioned uh, there's also Sister Romero Meneses. Yes. Tell us about so her. Bless uh, Maria Romero uh, Meneses. He, she is a, a, a religious woman from Nicaragua that worked in charity in Costa Rica. It's a very, very, very precious uh, example of life for all the young people because she was a woman and she was working for, for, for the poor in Costa Rica. He's very unknown, but, uh, but he's a Central American woman, so we want to know where young people of Central America have, have Sor Maria Romero as an example right. of charity. Now you're helping to organize all the volunteers for the World Youth Day, and that World Youth Day can't happen without volunteers. Yes, definitely. And they add so much to the event because they're there to, to guide people, help people, yeah. make sure they're on track. Tell us about your experience with the volunteers. No. Definitely this is a project that cannot be done without volunteers. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a lot of volunteers working in the parishes and working in the organizing committee. But for the World Youth Day we will need more and we, are, uh, we have like a, we have a direction, a, like a team, a very big team working close with volunteers, with the sensibilization, with the, 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 um, the formation of the, of the corps of volunteers. We have many enterprises uh, that wants to give them the, the employees as a volunteers. So, uh, it has been very, very joyful to, to see that all the people want to have for the world today in right. Panama. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's such a blessing for the host country too, Definitely. because these volunteers that are coming, the ones from Panama, you know, they'll, you know, they live in Panama, so they, their faith is gonna be invigorated by service. Yeah. So that could be a lasting effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an, a pastoral opportunity for all the church, and it's an opportunity of the people to, to make something different and to, to do something good. Right. And you mentioned there's currently there's pastoral initiatives in the parishes of Panama. Yeah. And maybe even uh, Costa Rica. To yes. All the parishes in Panama are working to re for receiving the, the pilgrims for all over the world. We know that near to here, uh, three or four hours, uh, would be German people, French people. Yeah. Right now, uh, they already have the, the contact with the Parises mm -hmm. in all over the, over the country, even in Costa Rica too, in other countries for Central America, they are working to, to receive pilgrims in, during the days in dioceses. And for the World Youth Day here in Panama City, <clears throat> in the Archdiocese of Panama, there are a lot of all the Parises will receive pilgrims. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And there's, in fact, I, at EWTN, there was a woman I just visited. She's from Panama here, yeah. and she wants to open up her home. For yeah, definitely. Yeah. There is. Sometimes we we are in 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 the street, where walking or in the supermarket, and people say, hey, I want to open my home to, mm -hmm. to, to receive people. And we have to say, well, you have to go to the parish and to tell the, the, right. the team because every parish has, have their own team of like a little organizing committee to see the volunteers, to see the family, f to f the family for, for, for uh, open the home and to see that all the other spaces like schools and gyms that will be used as a, as a, a location for, for rest or for the catechists. Yeah, I think that is such a great experience in World Youth Day. I went to Toronto World oh, yeah. Youth Day. 2002. You went there too? Yeah. No, oh. no, I, I didn't. I wasn't. I was uh, finishing my my degree in the university, so I oh. couldn't travel. Oh. I went. I went to uh, Cologne. Cologne. Okay. But we we stayed in a host family's house, and that was a great experience, just because yeah. they could tell you more about the culture. And yeah, yeah. It's if. It's not just for the pilgrims, it's, it's for the family, because it's a, a, a sharing of, of the life, the faith, and the culture, they're very precious. Even if you don't talk the, the, the same language. Right. We have this, this experience in, in Krakow, 
many of Panamanians went to families and they didn't speak even Spanish or English and they have a very, very uh, precious experience. Well, thank you so much uh, for You're speaking welcome, Father us. Mark. Welcome to Panama, and I hope you can come in January. Yeah, I need to get a hat still. Yes, right? definitely. <laughs> Some luck, and drink a lot of water. Okay. <laughs>
And uh, so that I'm just excited because I think, you know, you have the combination of like young people with their idealism, their energy, their desire for, for change to make something better, you know, to improve things. And that Marian dimension of faith where Mary just brings faith with her. I'm excited for this world mm -hmm. youth day. And even the Our Lady of Guadalupe devotion is so rich, especially in, in Central America and Mexico. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity to go there. And definitely whenever I was there in Mexico, I felt Our Lady's presence. And I'm sure there with the Marian theme, there will be a great Marian presence felt there yeah, as yeah. well. So. And combined with a Latin American Pope that can really connect with the people, obviously Spanish is first language. I think it's going to be a, a great, you know, coming together of forces to be a great World Youth Day and a special outreach to the poor. You know, exactly. Victor told yeah. us that the, the days in the diocese preceding the World Youth Day, they've done a lot of work with the poor and evangelizing, catechizing the poor and to make sure they're a part of this event. And the poor have such, uh, they have their faith to witness to us. You know, their dependence on God can be especially uh, compelling. So our End of the Vineyard challenge this week is to imitate Mary. She is the model disciple. She believes. She gives her obedience to God, takes her all the way to Calvary, standing in faith at the foot of the cross. Imitate Mary. She won't lead you astray. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. attractive word but it's not always what it seems i wonder if i really know what the true definition means the song from the 70s the bgs provokes questions in my head how deep is your love do you know what it all meant when you laid down on the floor and gave it all away did you really count the cost do you really live that way i'm looking at the cross and i'm picturing the sacred kenosis he poured out his love in buckets not in small doses and the truth is, I need to keep looking right at it and seek to live passionately for the passion and not move past it. It's so easy to guard myself from the essence of sacrifice and play the same mind game and do just enough to get by. But that's not what it is to be great. It's not what it is to be a saint. I don't want to be dead bones in a box, washed white with paint. If I step out on the water, I better stop and count the cost. The stakes are too high, wandering in this land of the lost. Eloquent words, our king is so quotable. We print his verses everywhere, it's just so notable. And if I remember correctly, Jesus said, I am the way. He is not one among wise men, the words they say. If you put his words on your lips, check the tag for the price. You can't say that you know him unless you live sacrifice. I never knew a Jesus peace to bring a man peace. Head nods in God's direction don't make a restless heart cease. Your cross, your call, it's something specific for you to do. 